guys. It's pretty early. It's about five in the morning. Um, I just got woken up to a really violent shake. The wind has just been blowing the crap out of this camper all night and rocking it back and forth, but it almost sounds like it tried to rip the vent cover off of the freaking roof up there, but uh, time to get up. Well, guys, I'm going to jump on the phone. I've got cell service so I can check the weather and see what it's doing. I don't know what to do. It's still absolutely ripping outside. The wind's blowing super hard, still shaking the camper around. So, realistically, I should not go out to the ocean or make an attempt when it's blowing this hard. So, I'm going to see if the weather is going to change or not. Dead horse. Oh, man. Ah. The weather totally 180 What the... That's wild. It was supposed to be mostly sunny and blue skies and super cold the next few days. And whatever storm is coming through right now, it just completely changed directions and blasted over this way. And all this wind blowing right now, it is blowing some totally new storm in that they didn't predict. And here I'll show you guys. This sucks so much. Areas of blowing snow, 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 snow every day. As far as you can see, it's not going to stop snowing. Now, the temperature warmed up a lot though. Low of negative 24 tonight, high of negative 12 today. What's up with the wind though? Tonight, low around negative 24, wind chill values as low as negative 55, wind 20 to 25 miles per hour. Next day, wind 15 to 20 miles an hour, 15 to 20. Next day after that, 15 to 20. Ah, such a bummer. That sucks. I can't hang out here for three days. It's costing me about $45 to idle the truck for 12 hours, so I can't hang out for three days. It's starting to add up too much. That sucks, guys. I just <laughs> actually made it all the way almost to the Arctic Ocean. I'm 10 miles away from it, and I can't get to it just because of the weather right now. I had my plan and everything, but I guess we'll just turn back and do another adventure on the way back. Because I was really excited to get out in the track bike and uh, go for it. Man, just can't win up here. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's another reason to come back one more time, but I wanted to make it this time. Let me do something really quick. I want to look up weather in Coldfoot, Coldfoot, Alaska. All right, Coldfoot Airport, special weather statement, hazardous weather conditions. Oh, great. What's it saying there? It's so small, you guys can't even read it. Some interior cold spots will reach negative 55 range. High temps will struggle to make to warm much more than negative 30. All right, weather today for Coldfoot, Alaska. Partly sunny, high of negative 33. Tonight, low of negative 44. So today, partly sunny, steady temperature around negative 33. Wind chill values as low as negative 55. Calm wind becoming north around five miles per hour. Okay, so good, just five mile an hour winds. Tonight, mostly cloudy, low around negative 44, calm wind. So it looks like if we head back to the Coldfoot Wiseman area, the weather will be good enough. It's gonna be super cold, but at least the weather, the wind's not gonna be ripping. So uh, maybe we can get out and go do some snowboarding and go explore in that track bike, and show you guys around. So let's go do that, I guess. That is our plan. It's still really awesome that I made it all the way up here because I didn't make it last time, but uh, Coldfoot's a long ways back. It's gonna be another solid eight to nine hour drive. So as you guys know, if you look back at the last video, I camped outside of Dead Horse last night, just south of it. And uh, I need to drive back into town this morning to go get fuel. I'm actually really curious how much fuel I use because I put it on high idle last night and uh, that way it kind of burns all the diesel and doesn't get accumulated in the cylinders, wet stacking and stuff. So we're gonna go fill up and see how much diesel I used. I've been idling for, I got here at eight o'clock and it's 8.10 now. So it'll be about 12 and a half to 13 hours idling by the time I fill up. So we'll go see what, how many gallons we used. <laughs> Tell you one thing, it stayed toasty in here last night. I'm gonna get some water going. Make a nice cup of Vietnamese coffee and 
Have some cereal. We'll be on our way. That's enough. Test it. Make sure we got enough coffee. Will that be enough? That's my guess. Perfect. I'll take it. I also want to see if the post office is open so I can send off all these postcards that I wrote last night. I get the dead horse over here. windows <laughs> freaking frozen solid in here oh yeah see all the frost cold all those front ones are frozen solid near my head it is really cold outside I still can't believe this weather I checked before I came up here and uh it was supposed to be sunny the entire week. The North Slope actually had better weather than uh, down south as far as the sun. That's the thing, when you get up towards the Arctic Ocean like this, you can just have weather changes and fog can blow in, winds can get crazy really quick. It doesn't take long for weather to change. So as much as I want to just go for it, I know it's not smart. And like I was saying, I don't want my life to rely on my cell phone with a GPS on it and the inReach with the GPS. Because if both those batteries were to die, I'd probably die. Maybe not, maybe I could fall my tracks back, but if the wind's blowing this hard, snow drifts, so I might lose my tracks or something. And it's supposed to snow today too, so. I could wait it out, but it's just too expensive to sit here and idle for three days. We'll just have to make another attempt at some point. I love adventuring, but I'm not gonna put my life in danger, danger, if you know what I mean, so. To me, the entire experience is about the journey. It's not about like the destination. I'd probably get out to the ocean and be like, eh, it's the ocean. It's not all about that. It's about the whole trip, all the stuff that's happened going up there. Like that's what makes me want to go on trips like this. The good news is it's supposed to be pretty and sunny back the other way, even though it's going to be freaking cold. I've got a lot of Arctic expedition gear, so I'm just going to dress up in that and we'll go out in that track bike and go check some stuff out and uh, it'll be cool. So. That's what we're doing. See? See? <laughs> All right, get our coffee. I think we're about ready to roll. Let's cut this heat back to 50 degrees. That way it just keeps the camper warm-ish back here. Keeps stuff from freezing. And we are out of here. Strap the old oven back down here. This is just silly. I need to fix this thing. I don't really have a way to fix it though. The Dometic ovens only have two tabs in the front to lock the oven into place. It's insane. There's no tabs in the back. So I've literally got two weld tabs on in this oven. So that's why I haven't fixed it. I do have a welder. I just haven't done it yet. It's okay. There's nothing a good old cam strap can't handle. Look at that. Like a rock boy. Tell you what. All right, you guys ready? Let's hit it. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Turn my lights off. All right. Woo. Holy crap. Okay. Let's not hang out in this very long. Oh my God. Woo. Oh, la, la, la. Oh. Hello, truck. Thank you for running all night. Oh, I'm gonna put my stairs up. All right, time to go. Oh my God, my hands are burning already. Woo. 
Ooh. Look at the wind. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's freaking cold out there. I can't explain how cold it is. Oh my God, I used over half a tank of fuel on high idle. Jeez. Okay, that was a lot. Let's go see exactly how much. I had a full tank last night. I filled up just two miles down the road, so I'm like a good bit below half a tank already. That's insane. No more high idle for me. Let's take it out of high idle. Wow, look at the wind. Now you can see it with this truck passing. So, like I was saying, the wind is absolutely ripping right now. Like steady 25, 30 mile an hour winds. Like I can't go out in this, there's no way. The snow's all drifted up beside my truck in the road right there from last night. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nuts, man. Well, let's go fill up the fuel. All right. Literally a freaking blizzard. The camera's not doing it justice too. I can see this camera screen and it doesn't look that bad, but it is freaking nuts out right now. I'm adventurous, but I'm not stupid. I know when to call it, and this is definitely worth calling it on. This wind is just gnarly, man. I'm not talking about gust. I'm talking about sustained 25 to 30 miles an hour. <laughs> That's hilarious. I pulled over just for a second to look at the uh, directions again because I think I could turn around and uh, a truck pulled over behind me and three of the slope workers jumped out and said what's up and took some pictures and stuff. But anyway, we're uh, almost at the gas station. I'm really curious to see what this thing used. I swear it used like freaking 10 gallons last night. It's insane. You know what's crazy, guys, is I almost stopped shy of Dead Horse and didn't come in to fill up last night. Um, the only reason I came in to fill up is because I wanted to see how much diesel I used while I idled last night But I think I would have ran out of diesel last night because I only had like Maybe a little over half a tank honestly, so I would have ran out and if you run a diesel engine out of diesel It's a biatch to get started again. So that would have been bad. This is a burly place, man This is the Brooks camp. This is a hotel you can stay at it's also where a lot of slope workers are camping. But they're basically just stacked connexes that you live in right there. Living quarters, frozen solid. And this is the general store over here. There's also a post office in here too, so I'm gonna send off these post office cards really quick. And that's funny, so right there is the welcome to dead horse sign. You can't even see it, just all plastered in snow. And all these overlanders and people that have traveled up here have their stickers in that wall right there. But uh, no one comes up here in the winter, so they're plastered away. We don't have a sticker anyway. Let's go get these postcards on out of here. Hey, there's some stickers right there. Yeah, try to remember this time. Okay. The snow all drifted up in here. Pretty wild. All right, let's go get some fuel. Goes the hotels. So last night I got a message on TikTok from a guy that was staying in one of those hotel rooms and he had seen the truck outside the general store and he uh, shot me a message. It's pretty funny. It's a small world, man. It's also really cool to me to have people watching the channel and just inspired and stoked to see the rig around. So it just makes me want to keep at it. It's a cool feeling. Here is the fuel station. Let's see how much this truck used idling for 13 hours, basically, at high idle. 
go to the same pump we went to yesterday. Sweet, approved. A diesel, it's a little cheaper here than cold foot, but can you guys even see that? I can't even see it. I don't know why the GoPro's not focusing. It's $6.84 a gallon. It's also the only fuel station I've ever been to, gas station, where there's a ball valve on it. So you have to open that up and then you can pump the gas. Nice safety feature in case the nozzle breaks or something. Two nights ago, I spent $45 to idle it in low idle. And then this time it was uh, $75. So that's $30 more if I idle it up higher, which makes the engine a little bit happier, but that's insane. I spent $75 to idle the truck overnight. Nope, we gotta go. That's why I'm not gonna hang out for three days and wait for the wind to subside. I'd have to leave this truck running. What's, up, What's going on, man? Say hi, man. We follow you on TikTok. All right, on. Yeah, dude. It's a small world, man. It's awesome, man. I yeah. think last time you tried to come up, you couldn't make it all the way. Yeah, the, yeah. The pass is shut down. Cool. Well, say hi. Yeah, y'all take right, it easy, man. Later. Later. <laughs> Can't go anywhere. I'm telling you. Anyways, so I idled the truck for 13 hours last night and used 75 dollars. So if I leave this truck running all day, at the minimum, that's going to be 75 bucks times two. So that's 150. 150 times three days is $450. So uh, I can't really afford that right now. So we're heading back down south. We're gonna go do stuff. Let's go. I'm gonna show you guys the sweet hoodie I picked up in the gift shop there. <laughs> it's freaking sweet. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Let's get a dog sled team. Let's roll. That might be the coolest hoodie I've ever bought in my life. Well, I will say, even though I'm 10 miles away from the Arctic Ocean and I didn't make it, I still had an incredible time, really fun time coming up here, even with all the adversities and stuff. So, and we're not done yet. Whoa. <laughs> i tell you one thing I am a little nervous about is the roads are drifted over here in town where there's constantly plow trucks going through. So I can't imagine what the highway is gonna be like. It might be super drifted. We might be breaking through drifts, so. We will see. All my gauges are looking good everywhere. Oil's good, oil pressure's good, battery's good. Got fluids. I didn't see any leaks under the truck this morning when it looked really quick. It's a fuel station, so I think we're all right. Wow, look at this load in front of us. <laughs> it's crazy looking, I wonder what that is. One wide load right there. So this is the main hotel that people stay at when you stay in the slope up here. As far as I know, Aurora Hotel. Everyone's truck is plugged in if you notice. They have all these block heater plugs. Now you can plug your truck in overnight while you're parked here so it actually starts in the morning. That's why I had to leave my truck running all night. Here's the hotel right there. Fancy place. <laughs> I just had a buddy 
uh, text me Sully. He's like one of my old paddling buddies, and he's working up here in the slope right now. He's actually leaving tomorrow, but he's gonna stop by and say hi really quick before I take off. So we're gonna chill here out in front of the hotel for a second for him. What's going on? Thought you got, I had a buddy pulling up a second ago. Thought you were him. I was following you when you were trying to make it up here. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, it shut down. Yeah, it was like, the highway shut down like freaking a day and a half last time, so couldn't make it. How long have you been doing this for? Uh, probably like four years in this thing, so close to. How long are you guys working up here? This is my first time. Like, first time? Right on. Yeah. Day, oh, nice. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it easy whenever nice you get up to. Yeah, man. Nice to meet you. Hey, I'll do. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch Holy of shit. shit. It's piled in. <laughs> What's going on? Let me move that drone out of your There we go. There you go. Hey, you're Woo. in tight. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> you made it. Yeah, man. I was going to try the ocean thing, but it's like, man, are you doing a crunch right now, or how are you staying up like that? <laughs> this is what these like things a strong dude. core, dude. I got yeah. good core. All knees. I mean, it's this something. is like, this is too gnarly, I think, to do, oh, the, dude. To do the ride out there. So. Yeah. I canceled like three jobs today. Did you? Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah, I talked to my buddy Paul Solis. Uh, Solis just texted me and uh, he's, he said they were getting like trucks stuck doing the ice road and all that today, like left and right. So, I yeah, know. I can't just believe the drifts, that called like, phase weather. Dude, how are the, uh, like, are the drifts? I don't know how it is. Like, I blasted a four footer yesterday. Did you? <laughs> Almost got stuck in the middle of nowhere by myself. Freaking drift come out of nowhere. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just like to the floor. Whoa! Oh, no. You're heading back south? Yeah, dude. That's going to go do some snowboarding down in Coldfoot, I think, and Wiseman and stuff. So, yeah. Did you stop at the store? It. Yeah, man. Yeah, I got a freaking... Wipe off the hoodie. sign and get a picture? No, I didn't even try it, dude. <laughs> yeah, no one's putting a sticker up right now. No. No. Yeah, I was filming that, dude. It was pretty funny. I sent some postcards off and stuff. It was cool. I had to, like, talk to a couple people I knew up here, too, so... Yeah, yeah. my camp's just right down the road. I guess across the way or something. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. Well, Let's man, try again. Yeah, I'll how about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, can you even get out of here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't there want to fall. I'm gonna try. You're, I think you're good for the most part. If you could do a little bit of weight. Oh, nice, man. Oh, I have to hit the climbing, inner climbing competition after this. <laughs> I'm just gonna try to get back into my C1 again. So you probably would have set the airbags off, but I don't have them. <laughs> Safe travel, bro. All right, man. Look for Later. It. <laughs> Here goes Sully. Here he goes. <laughs> it's so cool having friends wherever you go in the world like that. It's wild. It's amazing how small the world is if you just start traveling. All right, back in the road. Cold foot, 240 miles. Fairbanks, 494 miles. Next service, 240 miles. Wow, guys, this is nuts. I'm having to like hold my steering wheel to the right because of the crosswinds here. I wouldn't be surprised if we have some really large drifts we're gonna have to bust through at some point, but we're mobbing right now. I tell you one thing, you can see these markers on the side of the road. If there was snow covering this road and those markers weren't on the sides, you would be completely lost. It literally looks like I'm flying in an airplane through the clouds right now. So this is exactly why I didn't go out towards the ocean on the track bike. This would not have worked out very well. Feel good with my decision now. All right, just briefly, I wanna show you guys why I didn't bring the track bike out to the Arctic Ocean today because I would have been out in this and probably died. Check this out. Oh. It's gonna be really cold when I step right out here. Oh, there it is. I mean, can you see anything? It literally looks like a cloud out there. It's total flat light. Whew. And if I was riding this thing, I wouldn't even know where to go. I mean, you can't see anything. So that, my friends, is why I made the decision to not try to drive out to the ocean on that thing today. It would have been too dangerous. Crazy. This is like just a full-on blizzard, whiteout. 
little snow drifts are starting to pop up in the road every now and then. My tires kind of just blast on through them. And I see the snow is starting to drift up. Jeez. Snow is starting to drift up pretty bad. This wind is blowing so hard. Like if I let go of my steering wheel, watch this. Look what the car does. It goes right over, right off the road. Yeah. There's the pipeline. Looks like there's a pump station up here. We're about an hour south or so of uh, Dead Horse right now. Blizzard is still going. The winds have eased up just a little bit. But I'm still having to hold my steering wheel right. It's still blowing us hard left. That camp right there that definitely looks like a pump station of some sorts. All right, we're coming up in that big steep downhill up here. It's pretty good right now, but it's definitely pretty drifted over in a lot of spots. Ah. Holy crap. see it just lighting up the sky up here. So I am hoping that it's going to be a nice day when we get down here a little further, even though it's going to be cold and we'll get to uh, get out and do some stuff. Go exploring. Take a piss really quick and grab some lunch. Oh yeah, the temperature's dropping for sure. Oh geez, sucking snow in here again. That sucks. Yeah, look at all the snow drifting. I'm gonna have to fix that. I need some door gaskets when I get back to keep that from happening. Anyway. Let's grab some lunch out of here real quick. Uh, get some sandwiches ready to go. Here we go. Also gonna grab my Crocs. Wear those while I drive, so my feet don't get too hot. Get our sandwich. The lights. All right. Oh yeah, I see where it's leaking in. See my gasket's kind of torn right there. You can see it. It's cold. Let's go put the sandwich up. Ooh. Ooh. This is a lot colder. It's actually colder here than it was in Dead Horse. I'll take my mucklucks off. There's a lefty. If you guys know me, you know I love Crocs. I like driving in Crocs. Your feet just, your feet don't sweat. And uh, you don't want anything to start sweating out here. Because then it stays wet. Sandwiches are like four or five days old, but I'm sure the lettuce isn't too good. Let's take that off. But the rest of the sandwich will do just fine. Mm. Yep. That'll do. Okay, you guys are probably gonna think this is gross, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So I just took a piss like, what, two minutes ago? Check this out. It's already frozen solid. <laughs> Sorry.
steep hill. Uh, usually rough transitions at the bottom of the hill too. Yep, here it is. Ugh. If you guys haven't had hot and spicy Cheez-Its, they're delicious. It's probably like one of my favorite road snacks. If you guys have a favorite road snack, drop it in the comments. This is cool, we're driving right over the pipeline here. This is the big hill that drops us down. Cold foot, 131 miles. Just about exactly halfway in between cold foot and dead horse. Looks like this truck must have broken down right there. It's abandoned. That sucks. As you can tell we're starting to get closer to all the big mountains again. The road's just like solid ice again and the snow is starting to get deep and stack up. I was just driving along and uh, just thinking about my friends and thinking about my buddy Sully that jumped in the seat and obviously I don't have any room to sit. Got my garbage over there because I don't want to throw garbage away up here. I like bringing it back with me back to the city. Um, but anyway, there's nowhere for him to sit in here. So he's doing like a squat, like a crab leg spider crunch over here and hanging out with me for 10 minutes. I don't know, it's just thinking about all my crazy friends. And then I just came to the realization that the majority of my friends are uh, just a bunch of crazy Vikings. <laughs> just really, really burly people, burly individuals that uh, just live hard. And uh, those are all my best friends, which is funny because my mom's mom was basically Portuguese. Their family is from Portugal. And uh, yeah, I've got like a, a bunch of Portuguese in me hanging out with all these Vikings somehow. In all my grade school years, my nickname was Tiny Tim, um, just because I was super tiny. I was like five foot two, five foot three, 110 pounds when I was a senior, smallest kid in class by far. Freaking looked like I was 12 years old when I was 18. So I've just always had this like, I'm a tiny person mentality, you know? So it's cool hanging out with all these Vikings that come running up to me to say hi and stuff. It's kind of neat. Makes me feel like I'm part of the club or something. Looks like we're just about empty with diesel, so let's go ahead and switch to the front tank. For those of you guys that don't know, I've got two diesel tanks in this. They're both about 16, 17 gallons or so, which only gets me about 300 miles, but you can see my diesel gauge climbing right back up. What the? That was crazy. Just had to hit my brakes. Um, it's been a really, really rough road like that. And a bolt just fell off and landed right there on my freaking windshield wiper. Got super lucky. I fell out of my lights up there. It's this bolt right there in my light. Whew. Okay, we're back in business. Yeah, the bolt, uh, this one was loose and that one's about to fall off. So uh, I'll check all those really close tonight when I get back. I think everything else is looking pretty good since I'm checking stuff. It's good. Yeah, everyone's happy. Hey, here's the road too. You can see the surface. It's all these boulders, really rough. All right, guys, we're getting pretty close to the sketchiest part of the drives. Adigan Pass is coming up at about six miles will be to the pass. Oh man, this is so awesome. The weather's starting to clear. I think we're gonna get a beautiful drive up and over Adigan Pass up here. Here's the gates that close 
close the pass. Looks like it's open, so here we go. Here goes nothing. All right, y'all, here is the base of the hill and this turn. We need to go up that pass up there. It doesn't look steep, but I promise you it's steep. So we're gonna pull over here and uh, I'm gonna lock my hubs before I do this. Cause I actually started spinning out last time in two-wheel drive up there. I think it's too deep. Let's see if I can do it in Crocs. Sweet. Ooh, I close that up. Get warmer. Success, and we're coming around to a sunset out towards Wiseman and Coldfoot. So now we're dropping down the sketchy part. This is the long, steep downhill to the base of Attigan Pass. So if you guys look back at my videos on the original uh, Arctic trip, maybe a month or two before I release these videos, uh, you will see where I had to turn around at the bottom of Attigan Pass because there was several different avalanches and trucks stuck in between them. There's five semi trucks stuck in this hill and uh, the road is shut down for about a day and a half. Pretty wild, just a crazy storm last time I came up. Looks like it's already starting to try to drift in right now. Pretty nasty out. So good thing we're getting through tonight. Woohoo, here's the base. <laughs> Freaking made it. Almost, gonna make it around one more curve. I tell you what, man, it is so nice having a low gear like this. I just throw it down into that drive one gear and I haven't had to use my brakes almost all the way down. A lot of back pressure in the engine just keeping us nice and slow. There's the road we just came down up there. I don't think we're gonna camp up here tonight in the pass. It is a little bit too gnarly. Let's go get down out of all this. Hopefully we can drop out of this wind a little bit. It is supposed to be significantly colder on this side of the pass, unfortunately, but at least we can maybe get out of the wind. There's the Chandelier DOT station right there. That's the place that maintains this road, keeps the, keeps the berms at bay, snow drifts at bay, and keeps us plowed out. There's the gates, made it through the pass. All right, this is the final cliff to head on down, final hill. Uh, this is Chandelier Hill, I believe. This is super drifted in last time I drove this, but now it's pretty good, I think. Looks like they came in and cut it open recently. Get rid of the drifts. Most of these hills really aren't too bad as long as you approach them slow and don't come into them hot and just stay in low gear and just stay slow. Like, if you're staying slow, then you're not going to break your traction. But as soon as you build up too much speed and break traction, then you're in trouble. All right, we're home free for now. Let's see if we can get to Wiseman area before it gets dark. So another cool thing is now that we're back on the southern slope of 
the Brooks Range, there's freaking trees again. We're back in tree land. Isn't that crazy? It's like right when you cross over those mountains, there's no more trees. Now we're back in the trees, which also means back in the caribou, so we gotta watch out. This is such a beautiful drive. We're not super far from Wiseman. Mount Stuka Crack is right up here. check this out so we're at the base of Mount Sukupak right there and uh, got some caribou over here I don't know if you can see them what's up buddies here let me get my big lens so you guys can see we're right here on the middle fork of the Koyukuk River just chilling right off the road here some caribou chilling right there in front of me how cool is that or I'm trying to be as steady as I can with the camera here. Cool though. I can't believe I hit one of those last time when the truck was not. Whoa. Caribou in the road. Here we go. This place is just amazing, man. Freaking love this state. But man, it is cold outside. You can just see like the ice fog crystals in the air. Anytime it starts to get super cold, you just start seeing those. It's gonna be a cold night. I think it's saying down to negative 50 tonight, negative 55 possibly. That's without the wind chill. We'll be all right, we'll stay warm, but I'm gonna have to leave the truck running again. I tell you what, man, these freaking KC off-road lights make me feel so much safer. It's not even that dark out yet, but uh, watch when I turn these lights off. All right, here's my overhead lights, gone. Here's my other lights, gone. So these are my stock headlights. Here's my stock brights. Here's KC lights, the small ones. Here's my overheads. Big difference. Here's the cutoff to Wiseman right up here. Right, 13 miles from Coldfoot, almost made it. There we go, made it to Coldfoot, sweet. All right, woohoo! Here we are. So if you guys are just watching any of my videos for the first time, this if this is your first video, Coldfoot is exactly in the middle of the drive to the Arctic Ocean from uh, Fairbanks. There's still 250 miles with no services once you leave Coldfoot here all the way to Fairbanks. So it's like the longest stretch of no fuel. So in other words, this is where all the truckers kind of stop and fuel up and do their thing, which is exactly what we're about to do. Get some fuel here. 
the restaurant and the gas station, you know. All right. $7.50 a gallon. I'm going to find my gloves because it is freaking freezing outside. I'll literally burn my hand if I touch any metal right now. Not even joking. Frostbite. I was going to cook dinner tonight, but I totally caved and I got a bacon cheeseburger and some tots. <laughs> They're cooking it right now. So tomorrow we're gonna go hit some trails and get this track bike out and uh, I'm gonna bring the snowboard and uh, we'll go ride in somewhere, get out there pretty deep and then we'll take the snowboard off and it's a split board so I can walk on it like uh, like snowshoes and we'll go walk up a mountain, snowboard down it, should be good. Grand total of $160 for 21 gallons. <laughs> it's not cheap. Let's go get our credit card back, grab our burger and tots, and uh, find ourselves a camping spot for the night, probably right here. The reason I came back to Coldfoot tonight to uh, camp is, number one, because I need diesel, and I'm gonna idle this all night, so I would've ran out. I guess I have that spare five gallons. But the main reason is because I have a YouTube video premiere tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, and I need to be here to do the premiere because there's internet here. There, not internet, but phone service works here. So that's my plan. The video is going to be, I think, uh, going out to a survival cabin in the Alaska wilderness or something like that. If you guys look back at my videos, a few videos before this video, you'll see that one. That's when me and one of my best buddies, Matt, went out to a pretty cool cabin on snow machines. Anyhow, let's go. I tell you one thing, since it's negative 42 Fahrenheit right now, the last time my truck wouldn't start was in Fairbanks a couple days ago, and that was negative 45, so I'm not gonna cut the truck off. I'm gonna leave it running again, all night. Totally worth it. At this point, this truck has been running uh, one day, two day, two and a half days, so tomorrow morning, this truck will have been running three days straight without shutting off whatsoever. And then it's gonna stay running all day tomorrow, all day the next day. This truck's gonna run five days straight without shutting off. How about that? Pretty crazy, sounds crazy. Well, it's negative 42 degrees right now, check it out. You think I'm joking? I ain't joking. These are all the people that made it up here. I wonder if Phil hold down the mob is up there somewhere. Okay, enough yapping. Let's go get a camping spot. All the trucks all staging to go north over there. I think we'll camp out right over yonder. This looks pretty nice right here. That'll do. That looks level enough, right? All right, here we go. It's in park, and what time is it? It is 6.23, so here we go. This truck's literally about to idle for like 14 or 15 hours, so it's all good to see. I'm gonna leave it low idle because that uses half the fuel for a while. I'll come out and alternate it. Oh boy, set our burger up here. I can't believe how cold it is. I'll tell you one thing, you don't want to touch metal for too long. So here we go, this is home for tonight. Up there. Ooh. Ah. That burns to touch metal. I can literally just burn my hand. Okay, it's cold. Let's crank this. I'd love to have a fire tonight, but uh, we're at a gas station, so I probably shouldn't. I might not like that too much. Let's sketch him out. Whew. All right, home sweet home. We are here for the night. <laughs> Look at the windows in here. Frozen solid. Totally frozen solid. Literally all of them. All those up there too. 
frozen solid. The only ones that aren't frozen are these double insulated windows. These things are sweet. A company called uh, Maygood in Japan makes these, but they've got like screens that pull down and privacy curtains that pull up, and then you can open them up really easy. There's a little bit of frost, but you can't really feel the cold against these windows too much. They're pretty freaking awesome. Yes. On today's menu, we have bacon cheeseburger. If you guys watched the last video that I came out with, one right before this one, I probably had a bacon cheeseburger in that video, but pretty legit. And it's only like, I want to say it's like $14.95 or $15.95. So it's like pretty much 15 bucks for a really large, delicious burger and a whole bunch of tater tots in the middle of freaking nowhere. It's pretty awesome. It was either this or I had some cans of chili, so I was gonna eat chili tonight, but it sounds better right now. We also have a pretty big adventure I'm taking you guys on tomorrow. I'm gonna study some maps tonight and kind of see where I wanna go. And uh, we're gonna take that snow bike out tomorrow and take the snowboard out and go get after it. Look at this, onions, fresh tomato, whole bunch of pickles, nice big green piece of lettuce. Where did that come from out here? It's freaking negative whatever out there. Look at that burger. Look at that thing. <laughs> this was a good decision. Speaking of windows, since we're at a truck stop, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the uh, privacy curtains up. That way we have privacy. And I don't even have to worry about the other curtains because we have a uh, Ice curtains, ice curtain, ice curtain, ice curtain. We're good to go. All right, guys. So we're gonna go to Onyx off road here, and I want to show you guys where I'm going tomorrow. I was looking around on here for trails, and there's not a ton on Onyx in Alaska where I'm at, but there's no information on anything up here, so that makes sense. And we're gonna go to the town. Of Wiseman, Wiseman, Alaska, right there. And there it is right here. Let me zoom out so you guys can kind of see. So what we're gonna do um, is go to the 3D feature. This is pretty sweet. Right there, we're gonna go to 3D map. Boom, check that out. So now we're gonna go, go down into the town of Wiseman and there's this mountain I wanna do. I want to snowboard this peak right here and it's called um, Midnight Dome. So I want to start up there on that face and ski this ridge, snowboard that ridge all the way down to this road which is right there and I get to this road from the highway over here. So let's see how far it's going to be. I can drive to right here I believe so Let's go up to the tools. We're gonna make a new route and we're gonna go start right there. Right there. It's kind of smart, it kind of auto fills everything. See how it's kind of filling as I drag my mouse along. I wanna see how far of a ride this is gonna be on that snow bike. I think it's right there at the base of the dome, right? Nope, not quite. Right there. And you can see that is the base of the spine. I want to snowboard right there. And over here it tells me my exact distance, 2.6 miles. So 2.6 miles one way there and then two and a half miles back. So it's five miles round trip to get to the bottom of the mountain where I have to hike up from there with the snowboard. So that's our plan tomorrow. And uh, this is a really cool area. We're gonna go into Wiseman over here and check out the town. It's a really cool little place. I'm um, really sleepy this time of year, obviously. Really sleepy always. Just a few residents there, but it's a really cool spot. So that is where we are heading tomorrow. And this is uh, right beside get to the Arctic National Park. I'm gonna be snowboarding literally on the mountain right beside get to the Arctic National Park. Pretty rad. All right, now that I have my route made, I'm going to name the route Timmy Snowbike and save it. And now this will be saved on my phone as well. So when I pull up my Onyx on my phone, 
I'll be able to, that route will just automatically pop up and I'll know where to go. It even tells me the elevation right there. So I'm starting at 1200 feet pretty much and going up to 1700 feet. So pretty good elevation gain, like 500 feet. I would have to walk that 500 vertical feet, but I'm gonna ride that track bike in. So we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, it is almost midnight. I'm about ready to pass out. I'm gonna go check on the truck one last time. And I'm gonna tune the idle down so I don't spend a fortune tonight down to stock idle. He burned a quarter tank. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, it is freaking cold out there. Holy crap. I'm gonna get the bed out and pass out, but I will see you guys in the morning.